This is episode three of my Mandalorian costume build. In the last couple of videos, I've made the helmet as well as the chest and shoulder armor. In this video, I'm gonna be making the forearms. Before we get started though, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the little notification bell. That way you'll be made aware of when I post up future videos doing the rest of the costume. What you've done that, let's get cracking. So we start off with the templates. I'm gonna to wanna to cut these out with scissors. There's a scale on the top right of each one of these to make sure you've got these printed to the right size. And these are printed out on A4 paper. Just cutting down the top center part of this right forearm. And this part is going to be the bit that wraps around and under the forearm. Tracing around these on 10 millimeter EVA foam. These are just floor mats. And then cutting them all out with a really sharp knife. This part is heat formed on the back with a heat gun and then curved into shape. So taping on that flat top section and then using a heat gun to heat form that some more to get that to the shape that we want it. The top bit stays flat but I want this curved bit to keep its curved shape so it will put less stress on the glue join when we later glue it together. Once this is cooled it's a good idea to test it actually fits and you can get your hand through. If you can't you're going to have to rescale the templates and print them again. But as this does fit I can continue on with the detail pieces. Now using the template, some of the parts need to be cut up and then some parts are made of thinner foam. I've only got these foam mats and craft foam, so any parts that need to be made thinner, I just end up cutting the foam down thinner with a really sharp knife. These bits here need some detail lines etching in. The way I do this is to use a sharp blade, cut the lines in and then use a heat gun to open them up later. Using a sharp knife at the moment to you do a V-shaped groove in the side of this and also cutting out some pieces which are then going to be glued in set back slightly. So this is me gluing in that part that I just cut out and it's set back about halfway down the depth of the foam so it's about four or five mil lower than the rest of the piece. So just building up that part in layers now. Lots of glue to make sure that's on nice and secure. Part goes in the front, it's a bit slightly lower down, so I had to cut that foam thinner. If you've got thinner foam already, then use that. I've just cut mine down thinner using the heat gun to open up those detail lines I've carved in with a knife. So, these are the little barrels, I suppose, of the little gun thing that's going to go on the side. Not entirely sure what they're supposed to be, but they've got varying uh, thicknesses to these. So I'm using some wooden dowels and then wrapping them in strips of craft foam. This is just two millimeter craft foam I picked up from Hobbycraft. And then I've sharpened the ends of these and they just stick right in. There's three of these. The one in the middle is slightly different than the two either side. These aren't screen accurate by any means. I just was putting various thicknesses of foam on these bits of wood and sticking them in to make them look like some sort of space age weaponry but by all means you want to go on Google and look at some screen captures from the TV show to make yours look more authentic then uh, you can do that if you like it's up to you but these are good enough for what I intend to use this for so I just kind of made it up as I went along this part is then glued onto the side And that's that one pretty much done. On to the next one. So same as before, the part that wraps around your forearm, that's traced around first. This one's got a few extra parts that are cut out and set back. And then heat formed in the same fashion, made sure it fits and then you glue that flat bit on. And then using the templates to cut them up into the individual pieces to make all the detail parts. Any time I've got to glue the textured side of these floor mats, I always rough it up first with a rasp pile to help the glue stick better. This is the left forearm and is a lot more tricky than the right one I found because getting the shape of the uh, whistling bird rocket thing was a lot more tricky. A 
cutting some bevels into this part that goes on the side and as before with the other forearm cutting some detail lines that will be opened up with a heat gun. So using a toilet roll cardboard tube to make the main structure of the whistling bird I figured that one thickness of this flimsy cardboard wouldn't be enough so I doubled it up and then using that paper template to make sure it's the right width. I then cut out some semicircles to stick on the inside to reinforce it and then wrap the whole thing in craft foam. That was then glued on along with a couple of extra detail pieces. Need some little circle details, so to get those I use a bit of metal pipe sharpen the end and then use that almost like a drill to cut through a piece of foam and then use a pin to get that back out. I had to make a lot of these to stick in the front. These were just glued on one at a time with a tiny little dot of hot glue. As before cutting some v-shaped grooves into the forearm just to give it some panel lines and this is a wood burning tool just to add the little uh, barrels, I suppose, of the whistling bird. The soldering iron would also work for this. Before paint, these are heat sealed with a heat gun. That just gives it a smoother surface to paint. The paint I'm using is acrylic paint. It's three parts silver to one part black. And I just apply this with a soft bristle brush. I ended up putting on three coats of this gunmetal slash Beskar color. You could of course spray paint these. This would give a lot smoother finish, but I can't really spray paint stuff in my living room. So I went for a brush. After the paint, these were sealed with a clear automotive lacquer. On to weathering, I mixed a little bit of brown with a little bit of black paint and a tiny bit of water to thin it down. And that got me this dirty, muddy looking colour. And this was just applied with the same brush, making sure to get that into all the grooves and then it was wiped away with a bit of tissue. Make sure to wipe away from the grooves, not into the grooves, as you don't want to take all the paint off. You want to try and simulate a build-up of dirt and grime. If you go a bit mad with this and it's on a bit heavier than you'd like and need to remove it, you can just wipe it away with a wet rag or a baby wipe, and it won't damage the silver paint underneath as we have sealed that all with that clear coat. Once the weathering is done and you're happy with it, you're going to have to cover that with another coat of the clear coat, otherwise it will be prone to come off, especially if it gets wet. And here they are all finished. Two completed Mandalorian forearms. Got the whistling bird here. It just slides on like that. And this was the flame throwy slash grappling hook one or whatever it was. That just goes on there. They're a little bit tight, I've had to cut a bevel into the uh, inside there, just to make it easy to get my hand in and out. They're a little bit loose, but when I've got the, um, the uh, flight suit on as well, it pads these out a bit so they don't rotate around my forearm. So I want them to be tight now when I've got nothing on, and then they'll be too tight to fit the, uh, the rest of the outfit on underneath. 
But I'm going to show you some close-ups of these now so you can see these at all angles, which may help you when you come to build your own. So there you go, one complete set of Mandalorian forearms. And if you'd like to have a go at making these yourself, you can find the free templates over at the Facebook group, the Perfectly Imperfect Makers Community. There's a link for that down below in the video description. So that's it for this video. The next one is going to focus on the thigh and hip armour. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the little notification bell to make sure you're made aware of when I post that one up. But until then, happy crafting and remember, you don't have to be great at making to make something great. Bye bye.